Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about the five things that drive me crazy about modern day hot rods. So guys, throughout most of this video, I'm going to have pictures that will show up randomly that will help me to describe to you exactly what it is that I'm talking about when it comes to the five things that kind of, um, I don't want to say, I mean, maybe it is anger, but it's also disappointment sometimes. It um, makes you scratch your head a little bit and question what was somebody thinking. Um, number five is when you go to things like a, a, an annual car show or a rural car show where people are showing off their rides, Although I can appreciate every, uh, every amount of detail that goes into a lot of these vehicles, some of them, in my opinion, just don't belong there for simple fact that maybe they're daily drivers. Okay, that's great. Daily drivers can go into a car show. But guys, come on. Clean them. Take the garbage out. Wipe the bugs off the windshield. Shine up them tires. I mean, these are some of the small things that when I go to car shows, I see cars that are there all the time that look like they've been driven for the last six months and they just pulled into the car show and expect to show their car off. Maybe they feel like they've got something to show, but take a little bit of pride in your vehicles, guys. Throw, you know, grab a little kit, some windshield washer, bug, you know, get, get something to take the bugs off and shine them tires and wheels. Like, I don't pop the hood on this thing very often for that simple reason. I mean, it's fairly clean under there, but I'm, I got nothing to show off under there, so I don't. Uh, and I wish that some people would have the common sense to know which vehicle should be shown and which shouldn't be shown. So number four, I've kind of titled this section as head scratchers. And the reason why I say head scratchers is because we all know we go to the car shows and we see something like this. And if you look really, really close, PT cruisers probably don't belong in a car show to begin with, but let alone one that has little statues of skulls and uh, I don't know what kind of paint job that is all over it, but it probably isn't something that should be shown at a car show. Nevertheless, somebody put a lot of work into that vehicle, and uh, not to mention this one, which looks like some sort of a station wagon converted into a hearse of some sort maybe, but it looks to me that there's like dead babies or what seemingly might be dead babies or sculptures of something or other and spoilers that are way up in the air and again you know a lot of work and effort went in, into this car and uh, I think that somebody with that amount of talent probably could have done something a little more pleasing to the eyes. Uh, the last one that I wanted to show you was this Corvette. Now this Corvette looks like somebody has taken a rattle can or several rattle cans and gone all over the car and every inch, even the tires, has got something sprayed on it. I'm not sure what prompted somebody to take a perfectly good Corvette, granted it is just a C4, but nevertheless, uh, in somebody's eyes, uh, they are crying right now because of this car. So on to my third selection. This one I've classified as Gone Too Far Customs. and. Uh, what I've got up on the screen there right now is what looks to be what might have been a Camaro or a Corvette at one point in time. Um, but again, a lot of effort went into this car for the molding, the fiberglass, the paintwork and stuff like that. And this particular one, again, has me scratching my head and asking, you know, what was the intent or what was the motivation to put this kind of vehicle together and spend that kind of money on something that, in my opinion, um, looks kind of ridiculous. I, I get th These are just my opinions, guys, and, and I, maybe you share them with me, maybe you don't. Maybe you can put your comments down in the comments section below and let me know what you think of some of these cars or let me know what you think of my opinions. But nevertheless, these are just my thoughts. Uh, on this. So the next one that I'm going to show you looks like a Chrysler 300 uh, and uh, a late model Chrysler 300 and I mean yes suicide doors that looks great but I'm not sure really what's happening with the roof or the hood or what looks like maybe a 
truck bed of some sort on the back where they're all opening up with the jagged edges and stuff like that. Again, folks, a lot of money goes into these vehicles, no matter how ugly or how good they look. But if you're going to sink that kind of money into a car, why not have it look pleasant or, or appealing to the masses? I, I get that somebody has done this car for their own pleasure, but uh, my soul. On that note, there is a fine line, in my opinion, between doing something that is way out there and looks bad, but something that is way out there and really looks good. If you take a look at this first one, now I'm using Hot Wheels as an example because there's a lot of big name artists out there, or big name car builders out there who are building uh, cars like this Twin Mill. And uh, you know, again, there's a lot of metal work and or fiberglass work that went into building this car. And it is, to me, very asymmetrical. It's uh, pleasing to the eyes. I mean, who wouldn't want to drive a car with two big block engines in it? And then, on the other hand, you've got this one. If you guys follow Gas Monkey Garage, you'll, you will have seen this one in the past where they take a Corvette and they take it and make it into something that would have been a Hot Wheels classic of the 70s and 80s. Now, I like, I like both of those cars. Why? Because they're pleasing to the eye and every, every dollar that went into it, in my, in my opinion, uh, was, was justified money spent. Moving on to number two, donks. I don't get it. So when I was a kid, donks, or I got, I'm not sure if they were called donks back then, but when I was a kid, these were just starting to come on the scene in the 90s. So you would uh, see a lot of cars like this Caprice and, uh, and this uh, Riviera, where the goal was to stuff the biggest wheel and tire combo that you could underneath the car, still have it drivable. And again, they looked somewhat appealing. But now today, what they're trying to do, you take a look at this Buick here, where it almost looks like it should have been a four-wheel drive, and I shake my head at it, and I really don't get the actual accomplishment as far as the aesthetics goes. And then you've got this Caprice here, which isn't too bad, but I mean, man, it's jacked way up there. And in my opinion, these cars are something that should be kind of sitting on the ground a little bit. Big wheels and tires, yes, but my soul. And then, of course, you've got this monstrosity. And I really don't know what the heck somebody was thinking. Now, obviously, this photo is, uh, has been tampered with and photoshopped, but that's just an abomination against all square bodies. Last but not least is what I'm going to call low profile and or lifted trucks with the low profile tires, the big 14 wides. And if you guys follow, you know, Street Speed 717 and Dirty Max Jack and a bunch of those guys, they're all driving these big jacked up lifted trucks and they're putting these silly little low profile wide tires that stick out six and eight inches past the fenders. And they just, in my opinion, look ridiculous. Here is Dirty Max Jack's, what he's been referring to as the Mini Max. And you can see that it's just a little bit too much. I mean, if you're going to lower a truck, which is what he's done in this particular case, uh, lower it and put your, you know, low profile tires, tuck them in a little bit. That's the look you should be going for. But all they're doing is they're taking low profile tires and these great big wide things and they're just trying to make them look like something. And as far as I'm concerned, and here, here is uh, his other vehicle, his uh, big Duramax, I think it's a 2015, and doing the same thing, like he lift it in the air, but put low profile, big, you know, uh, 20 inch or 22 inch tires on, and you've basically, all the money you've spent on your lift kit have negated that by putting low profile tires on this vehicle. Uh, the other one I mentioned was Street Speed 717. Here's a picture of his truck. Now his doesn't look too bad from this angle. However, he's doing the same thing. Putting these big cognito lifts on these trucks and then with a low profile 20 inch tire, bringing it back down to almost regular ride height uh, and the tires just kind of sticking way out there. Uh, it doesn't do a thing for me. And uh, you know, back in my day, this is the image that you used to get of a lifted 
four-wheel drive truck. And yes, of course, I chose a square body with the big meaty tires on it. Of course, back in the day, 15, 16 inch tires were what you rode on these things. Guys, I hope you can really appreciate where I'm coming from with respect to these vehicles. Now, I'm not hating on the builders for uh, the work that they've done. I, I said it before. I really appreciate all the work that goes into building every single one of these custom cars. But what I question is their intentions on trying to make something a piece of art that was never intended to be that way. Of course, there's arguments on both ends of that. However, that's the reason why I put this video together, so that you guys know where I come from when it comes to customs and, uh, and what I like and what is pleasing to the eye. I'm a very subtle kind of guy. I really like the subtleness of a sleek hot rod with, that's been lowered or that's been lifted. Uh, and the subtleties that are involved. Uh, if you know me at all, you know that Chip Foose and um, Dave Kendig from Kendigit Designs, those are two guys that if they were gonna take my car, I could say, do what you want, and I know that I would not be disappointed with the end result because they don't go over the top. There's a lot of guys out there that do. So there you have it. There's my five things that drive me crazy about modern day hot rods. So guys, I'm wearing an official Old Car Auto Guy hoodie. You can get your very own at the first link in the description box below. T-shirts, hoodies, multiple colors. This one's kind of a navy blue, and uh, you can order those up. Prices are reasonable, and I hope that you do. If you do, send me a picture of you wearing your Old Car Auto Guy merch, and we'll make sure that we give you a shout out in an upcoming video. The contest is still on for $1,000 cash to be given away to one of you lucky subscribers if we can hit 1,000 subscribers by January 31st. We've got a long ways to go, so don't forget to share these videos and tell all your friends if they're into cars, and hopefully we can get that up there and give away some money. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you. God bless. Let's do it again.